I play this guy Martinez, who's a wisecracking astronaut, if there is such a thing. Um, and you know, I just want to have fun. You know, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm a dad. You know, I have a wife back at home who's very understanding. And uh, you know, he basically you know makes sure that the, that all the ships are running well. You know, and he operates them. You know, to and from Earth, and he navigates the MAV, the the Mars ascending vehicle. Uh, this is the Hermes right here. And my spot's right over there. So basically, I operate this thing. I'm like, I guess you could say the driver. And then I have assistant drivers, and I have my commander. And then I got two other people here making sure that I don't kill them. Matt's character's written really funny. I'm written kind of like a, a little bit more crass than anything. These other guys are on a mission. The hardest scene was like actually just like the first scene when we were in the habitat, like wearing that you know, the spacesuit, um, it's, it's something that Ridley told us was going to be, um, it was, it's going to be something that NASA probably uses later on and where it's not as big. Um, it's kind of more fitted towards the body and, uh, but at the same time, it's not a NASA suit. You know, there's things that dig in and then you're not used to that. It's like kind of wearing a, a wetsuit all day. So you're just sweating and it's kind of like, you're just not used to it. And, you know, we had cooling packs and sometimes I'd forget, but you know, you're supposed to plug in so that the cool water can come into you and, and you know, cool you off a little bit. And I forget sometimes and I just be like, you okay, Mike? Yeah, what's up, buddy? What are you, or, yeah. And that was kind of tough. Because of the possibilities that could be, you know, like the, the, the universe is so grand that there's gotta be other galaxies. That, it just makes more sense that there's other living beings on other planets than not not being like um and also it's kind of weird but i'm like would we really want to be the only people alive you know like the only people on earth like that you know kind of like questions like that kind of enter into your brain into your mind you know and the possibilities of there being some other life forms is just really interesting the story is simple uh, has a lot of heart to it um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Ridley Scott, which is another thing. Uh, I think the cast is phenomenal, phenomenal. Like, uh, you know, Jessica Chastain, Matt Damon, you know, Jeff Daniels, Chewy Tell, like those guys are like, you know, they're big wigs, you know, in, in the profession. And, uh, I just, when it comes down to it in all reality, I think we have a great story and with a great director and, you know, these guys are great actors, um, to tell that kind of story. And it's a story that I haven't heard of yet, uh, that I haven't seen. And, uh, but is also satisfying. It really hits you with like how serious something like this is. And, you know, we were talking before, but like every station, like this guy has a flight plan, she has all the numbers of the ship and I'm actually operating the ship. And then I have a commander and then there's two other people here helping out. So all that for one vessel. So, and you get to see that it's a lot of it is life and death. Hello, Valerie here with some fascinating movie facts from Ant-Man. Ant-Man's helmet is influenced by the helmets of Iron Man and the Autobot Transformer Bumblebee. According to Michael Douglas, the costume for poor Rudd had to be altered because of his muscles. Rudd had gone on an extensive training and workout regimen in order to build the proper muscle sides for a superhero. But since Rudd had become so muscular, Douglas said he was so cut that they had to soften his costume up with all the built-in six-packs and all of that. Wow. Download our Filmis Now app, available for both Android and iOS.